Hi everyone, welcome back to the Bible Project Podcast. We're continuing in the story of A Tale of Two Brothers and we're picking up the text in Genesis chapter 4 and we'll be covering verses 9 to 16 today. I would remind you that the transcript for all these podcasts is available in the episode notes of the audio versions of these podcasts wherever you're downloading them from. So we saw in the last episode that Cain had risen up and slain his brother Lot. So let's see what happens next and pick up the text in verse 9. Then the Lord said to Cain, Where is your brother Abel? I don't know, he replied. Am I my brother's keeper? When God had approached Adam and Eve about their sin, they tried to rationalize and blame shift, but they ultimately did not deny what they had done. But Cain here blatantly lies by insisting that he says he doesn't know where his brother is. Furthermore, he's defiant before God, asking of God if he is his brother's keeper. In other words, his response challenges God's right to even question him. For a nation or a family to survive and prosper, people within it must be responsible for the well-being of one another. Cain's answer should have been the opposite. It should have been, yes, I know where my brother is because I feel responsible for him. I am my brother's keeper. God then says this, The Lord said, What have you done? Listen. Your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. Now you are under a curse and driven from the ground, which opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you work the ground, it will no longer yield its crops for you, and you will be a restless wanderer on the earth. In other words, God says, I know where Abel is, and so do you, and you are guilty. When you see that God places him under a curse, Please note, this is not a curse of eternal damnation. This is an advancement of the original Adamic curse from chapter 3. And now we'll see that there will be even greater difficulty in raising food. I think the way we could put it, that this for Cain is a case of being sentenced to hard life with hard labour. And furthermore, it tells us he's going to be a restless wanderer, meaning he will be destined to wander around endlessly looking for a more fruitful place to grow crops. But there's more. Let's pick up the text in verse 13. Cain then said to the Lord, My punishment is more than I can bear. Today you are driving me from the land, and I will be hidden from your presence. I will be a restless wanderer on the earth, and whoever finds me will kill me. But the Lord said, Not so. Anyone who kills Cain will suffer vengeance seven times over. Then the Lord put a mark on Cain, so that no one who found him would kill him. So Cain went out from the Lord's presence, and lived in the land of Nod, east of Eden. Notice he didn't show remorse over the sin. He's only showing sorrow here because he's been punished so severely. He hates the consequences of his actions, rather than the actions himself. And Cain appears to sink into despair because he recognises that he'll be driven from the blessings of living under God's favour henceforth. So he's complaining about his punishment and the fact that he's scared people will want to kill him if they recognise him and know who he is. But then God does an amazing thing. He protects Cain by issuing a decree that if anyone kills Cain they will suffer seven times the punishment. Thus, as a warning to others to not go the way of Cain, and as a way of securing his safety from human vengeance, the Lord sets a mark on him. God does not approve of vengeance. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. So although he judges Cain, he also protects him from human vengeance. All right, all we've done so far is look at these first 16 verses. And what has happened in these opening verses of chapter 4 is we see God identify and trace the offspring of Cain in order to show us what will happen later to the line of Cain. Now the text is going to tell us about the line of Seth and we'll pick that up in the next episode. Okay everyone, that's it for this time. Thank you for joining me.
Now the place to go to connect to this and any other ministries I'm involved in is the podcast notes section of the audio podcast on the Buzzsprite website or by looking in the episode notes section on whatever app provider you use. Within that you'll not only find the transcript of each talk but you'll also find links to all the ministries and the way to connect with us including the Facebook page, my YouTube channel and links both to this, the daily podcast and the Living in Faith Everyday podcast which is a weekly roundup of all the various Bible study and talks that I'm doing over the period of the preceding week. You'll also find links there to my SoundCloud and my Bandcamp page where I create the background music and the sound design of these broadcasts. But with that, all I'd like to say is thank you for joining me and I hope to join with you again very soon.